For automotive electrical use, there are primarily three different types of connections. The end terminal connector, there are many forms of different terminals that you can put on the end of a wire. I show you how to do that in a video. Here's an example of one of those that I've completed. There's also a variation on that, which is a larger lug connection that's attached to a welding cable for battery cables. And I'll show you what mine looks like on uh, one of my batteries in one of my vehicles. A butt splice connection. And then a end splice connection that you connect a new wire to an existing wire. The end splice connector that uses cheap crimp on connectors that I solder to the wire and then use heat shrink tubing on. I show how to do that in a separate video. I'll link to that in the description below. And then the bigger connection, that, that's a little different. That requires a torch instead of a soldering iron to put those on. So it requires a little more heat, but you do it the same way. And then you use the heat shrink tubing on it. So the next splice I want to talk about is a butt splice or a Western Union splice or sometimes called a lineman splice. You can see here that the wires overlap and then they're twisted. So you strip back about an inch of each side of the wire. And you can tell from these wires these are both 16 gauge wire. Look at, look at the difference in the number of strands and the quality of the wire. Not all wires are created equal, obviously. So strip back about an inch of the wire. Make sure you put your heat shrink tubing on first. And you can bend these at a 90 degree angle. Or you can simply overlap them at about the three quarter point. Notice there's about a quarter here, three quarters extended, and I'm not twisting them. This one looks slightly twisted and this one's frayed. So another point, I don't know why you'd ever want to make a joint where you just stick these wires together and twist them. When you can do, you know, when the audio enthusiast, you want to take the time to solder a wire, why you wouldn't want to do this joint that I'm describing right now. So back to what I was talking about, overlap them about three quarters and then I like to leave them uh, untwisted so that they can wrap and lay down on the on the wire so then simply twist them around and twist them enough push on the end so that this point see how this wire is sticking out you don't want that you want to continue to twist until they're flat so they don't pierce your heat shrink tubing and you can continue to do that until you don't feel anything sticking out keep twisting and then simply straighten out the joint and then that's ready for solder I'm not going to teach you to solder just keep in mind make sure your soldering iron or soldering gun is hot, well tinned, and remember that the solder is drawing towards the heat. So heat underneath and add your, your solder to the opposite side. Ciao. This butt splice connection, of course, is useful for joining two wires together. Now you could do that with a crimp on butt splice connector, but why would you? As an auto enthusiast and somebody that works on their own car, why would you do anything other than what I just showed you? I just showed you how easy it was. And you wanna do soldered connections so that it'll last forever, right? So either you're working on your car because you love working on cars or you're trying to save money. So why would you do something like this that could corrode and only last a few years where you could do something that'll last forever? Now that joint is also useful for adding 
a pigtail. So to add a pigtail, so say your socket, this is a headlight socket for a Ford. So say that um, your headlight socket burnt out or the pins burnt out in here. So you'd use that same butt splice to add that into the existing wiring harness. Or you could use this joint to fix an existing wiring harness that has a bad spot in it, whether it's frayed or shorted out or whatever. There's also another way to use this type of a connection. If you look here, if you look closely, you can see here this little spot right here is a way to get those connectors out of there. And I'll show you how to do that. Use a very small little jewel or screwdriver, little regular screwdriver. And I'm going to use a, a different type of a pigtail, one that I don't really care about so I can take it apart. See how it also has the little square spot, spot right here that you can stick the screwdriver into. There's a little detent in there. So if you stick the screwdriver in there and then pull on the wire here, you can pull that connection out of there. Now, instead of using the butt splice and splicing it into the end of the wire, you can pull that out of there and you can reuse this connection or you can buy these connectors that'll go into a socket like this. Notice, see this one's crimped on in several places. This one would be hard to take apart. And I don't know why you'd want to do this particular one. This is an aftermarket one. But say that you had an old car and you wanted to reuse one of the OEM connectors, you could take this connector apart and then recrimp it and, and then solder into this and then reinsert it until it clicks. So that would be fixing that connector instead of using a butt splice connector. That's possible. The third type of connector is this T-splice connector, which ties the end of a new run into an existing wire. So this is maybe a wire that supplies keyed power to, um, to some circuit and you want to add a wire off that so that the component that you're adding is also runs off the ignition key. Or, like in several of my projects, I have different circuits that stay on after you turn off the key. Like my radio stays on with the windows, the power windows. And it stays on for 20 minutes if you, as long as you don't open the door. So sometimes I want to go off of that circuit. So now I can add this new wire to an existing circuit. And I'll show you how to do that. In just a minute. For this connection you strip back about an inch of the wire of the wire that's coming in from the T and the original wire you, you strip back about a quarter of an inch so again you want to keep this area as small as possible but yet serve your purpose so that you can solder it. To illustrate the technique I'm going to leave the insulation on both of my wires now the wire that you're going to, the new wire that you're going to bring into the existing wire, you strip back about an inch of insulation and on the existing wire you strip back about a quarter of an inch of the insulationing. You do a, a wrap over the top and under, across, wrap back. And then you attempt to do what I did with my butt slice spice connection is you wrap that so that there's no prong sticking out at the end here on this end. And then of course you solder the joint. The first splice is a preferred splice. Let me show you an alternate method is you simply just wrap the wire like you do with uh, the butt splice. And again you make sure that the ends are tucked in so that they don't interfere with your heat shrink tubing. So let me show you the technique of stripping the wire for this T-splice. I use a wire stripper. Make sure you select the right gauge 
for your wire. Of course, this was the easy part, stripping back an inch of your, your new wire. The hard part is the existing wire. You pull out, pull this out of a wiring harness. You disconnect any wiring harness um, location points that are holding the, to the car. So you can pull some of this away from the rest of the wiring harness. So you use the proper gauge. This is 14 gauge wire. Use the stripper in one spot and break the insulationing. Use the stripper in the second spot, about a quarter of an inch. So I've got it broken there and there. So you can see my two breaks. And then I use a utility knife and either a gloved hand or push this against something in the car. And I carefully, without breaking the wires, the strands of wires inside, I cut the insulation from break to break. And you can either use the utility knife. I like to use my finger and fingernail and just pull on it, pull on it, and pull on it until it comes off. So there I've got my, my spot that I can splice into. So again, my new wire coming in, and I can do the one wrap, come back across, and wrap again. And keep going so I should have made that just a little bit longer I should have stripped off a little more than an inch with this particular technique because I'm short right there but let me show you even though I am short you want to have about three wraps right there and then you'll have a good strong joint and you want to make sure you're soldering these right you're gonna solder them anyway so they'll they'll make a good electrical connection but let me show you as I pull that apart Look how strong that is. It's like a knot. So pulls apart hard. So let me show you one more thing before we're done with this joint. When, when you're doing this kind of connection, when you're on the bench, it's easy. But when you're in the car, it's hard. So let me show you an old wiring harness. This is out of a Crown Victoria. Uh, 87 Crown Vic that I got the 5 liter out of at one time. So when it's in the car, it's hard. It's hard to get to. The wiring harness is stiff and it's connected in different places to the car and you, you have to disconnect it so you have something to work with so you can move it around. And when I break into this wiring harness, you can see how this wiring harness is old. And that's probably what you're going to be working with if you if you love older cars. And uh, to get into this, you want to see the wire that's right here. And you have to get inside here and fish around for the wire that you want. So, but you don't want to cut any wires, right? So you can see that wire there. So I'm, I'm placing my knife in between the two wires. And then I'm going to cut the electrical tape. And I'm doing that without cutting the wires. So see, I didn't cut any wires. And now you use a small screwdriver and you can dig around in there and find the wire that you want. And now you have to pull on it. So again, a small screwdriver, get in there. And once you found the wire you want, you need to pull on it so that you can get your pliers in there and make your break. So again, too easy. Um, that concludes my video. I hope you found this helpful. If you do, please subscribe and I look forward to your comments.